so flippin' tiny. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Terry Squarey. This is the first video I've made of this kind, but I hope that I can do some more like this in the future. Um, today, I'm going to be unboxing some new carnivorous plants that I ordered. But first, um, let me give you a quick life update. Um, for those of you who have been with me for a long time, and those of you who don't really care, skip to this time. Um, anyway, so life update. I have been in school since February, um, and I honestly assumed that I could both film and be in school at the same time. And that has been very difficult. <laughs> I made two videos while I'm in school. And then after that, um, I had crushing depression. And so anytime that I wasn't at school, I was at home struggling. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm still working on that. I have a lot of doctor's appointments to figure that crap out. But anyway, just so you know, I'm in school to be a nail tech and hopefully that will be my main career path. I have not decided whether I'm going to make videos of that. Um, I think it would be really fun, but I am not sure if I want to. So we'll just have to see. But anyway, that's enough of a life update for right now. So right now, let's get into the meat of the video. So today, what I'm gonna be doing is cutting open some uh, unboxing for you some new plants that I ordered just the other day. I'm very excited about them. That's one of the reasons I wanted to document them because I'm really hoping that I can look back on this video later and see how big these have gotten. I ordered some carnivorous plants about a year ago from now. Um, and that's my first time ever really having plants and being like a plant mom at all. So I have, I bought one, um, I bought one Venus flytrap. I do not remember the type. And I bought one um, Nepenthes, which is a pitcher plant. It's the Nepenthes Glorious Mirror. Yes. And um, me and that Nepenthes have had a wild ride because those are not exactly the easiest to take care of. But I kinda, I'll kind of show you the gist of it today. This is not like an instructional video, but you'll probably learn a couple things if you're not into carnivorous plants already because they're a little bit different from your average plant. Anyway, so today I'm opening this box and I have a new type of plant in here that I have never tried before. Um, I only learned, learned about them recently because my friend Brittany, shout out to Brittany, which somebody should count up on my Brittany references on my channel because there's a lot. I've got all of my dried sphagnum moss. That's such a great idea. This is gonna be the potting material, and they just went ahead and put it in the box as packing material. That's actually a fantastic idea. That's really cool. All right, and I really wanted to put some stickers on these. These are what we're gonna pot them in for the next, I don't know, year or so. I'm not exactly sure how fast they grow. Um, but I realized they're gonna be submerged in water, so there's literally no point. Um, okay, so I bought, this is gross and I've never really wanted to buy this kind of thing, but um, you can feed your, your kind of rich plants. Um, some of them, some of them you can feed like this, not all of them. So you can feed them dried mealworms. So this is one of the things I bought. I don't know if I'm ever gonna go through all of these dried mealworms. There's a lot of them, but I'm gonna hopefully show you a video of me feeding them. Um, some dried mealworms. I don't think it'll be that entertaining because, um, yeah, anyway. So this thing has been in the mail for about a week, a little less than a week, about six, five, six days. And I just barely got it right now. And I am immediately opening it and going through it and filming this video because it, that's a long time for plants to be in a box. Anyway, so I bought some feeding supplement. Um, I bought them all from my main supplier that I buy these from, which is um, Predatory Plants. Shout out. They have a YouTube channel um, as well. And they also, they, they sell, they have a website. They sell all these things. So I bought this and the mealworms and these plants that I'm showing you from there, obviously. All right. So here 
is my plantus. Okay, I ordered five plants and they look a little not happy from the trip. Whew. I just blew the sphagnum moss everywhere. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Okay, <laughs> I haven't opened them yet, obviously. This is literally just how they arrived. So I did look over my packing information and it is exactly the same as last time I ordered. So I'm just gonna go through with you based on what I remember. So the first thing that you have to do is get all of this soaking wet. You can just kind of like pour it in the water and then soak it all. I just got this container because I didn't wanna get my like kitchen dishes dirty again. I don't know if you're supposed to use kitchen dishes for plant crap. Anyway, so you have to, for carnivorous plants, I, as far as I know it's all carnivorous plants, you have to use distilled water, rainwater, or osmo reverse osmosis water. Um, typically, you don't have rainwater or reverse osmosis water, but um, that's why I have to buy the distilled water. So I have this baby distilled. Um, yeah, they will die if you... Um, use the wrong water. For a long time, I thought that my filtered water from my fridge would work, and I was using that, and I very nearly killed my um, Venus flytrap because of the buildup of minerals. They are not supposed to have that. That's a no-no. They need no minerals, and um, yeah, so that was not fun. But anyway, let me get this wet 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 and then we will get some paper towels and undo everything maybe i shouldn't get all of it wet just in case i don't use all of it but oh well I was imagining that I was gonna try this out, but I think that I'm gonna try that out next time I repot a plant instead of now, because I just don't feel like testing that out on brand new baby plants. Um, I'm gonna use what they gave me. This is one of the Venus fly traps and one of the Drosera which is called a sundew. Here's what the baby looks like. This one is Drosera capensis. Red, so it's like a red one. Um, I think all the plants that I ordered today are red, which is kind of cool. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this one first. They got the, in a nice, really wet paper towel. All right. <laughs> I'm not supposed to disturb the root ball, but it disturbed itself. All right, so they got some, I guess it's coming from the little baby pots that they had. So it's supposed to be super wet. And then you wrap it around. This is what I was taught by the place I buy from. So I'm just gonna put that in the bottom. Put a little bit in the bottom here, measure it out. It's a little bit more at the bottom. All right, so I'm just gonna wrap. It's really hard to do this and show you at the same time, but I am trying my best. I've honestly been wanting to make a video about my plants for a while, but I just, I didn't know what to do other than just like be like, hey, look at my plants, guys, which is kind of fun. I might do the updates, update videos on them if you guys enjoy, if it gets enough views, you know, sometimes if it doesn't get views, it's a little disheartening. But anyway, so let me see. It's not supposed to be too tight. It needs to be a little bit snug, but not too, too tight. Okay. I like, I like how this looks. It might be a little low, 
Maybe I'll put a little bit on the side. Okay. No, I don't want to bury anything. Okay. This is a baby. They can get pretty big. I saw this chick on YouTube. I didn't look at her video, but I have all, it, you know a bunch of videos about this kind of crap being shown to me. And so um, it was like the size of her head almost. You want to see my plants, honey? Hubby's here. Maybe he'll come and say hi. My husband came down, but he didn't want to be on the video. So anyway, I'm going to finish doing this one. The pictures on this one are pretty big. This is a, oh no, piece of crap fell out. This one is called a Dian, Diane, Diania B52. I guess Diania is the name of the, um, <laughs> of the Venus flytrap. It's the only one I don't actually use the real name. So this one's not even the sphagnum moss. This one's just, this one's a different type of soil altogether. So that may leads me to believe that, not believe anything, but it makes me want to use something other than the sphagnum moss to plant it. But is that a horrible idea? Like I really want to try this, this plant. Don't shoot me. Should I just do it? You know what, let's experiment, let's do it. I hope I don't regret this. Oh my. What am I supposed to do? I don't have any gardening supplies, so it looks like I'm gonna use my hand. messy indoors. Nepenthes, not Nepenthes, well Nepenthes too, but the Venus flytraps are never supposed to dry out. So fill it, fill it with the soil, leave a small hole for your plant to fit snug. Spray with a bottle with distilled water. Spray the soil until it is moist, but not soaking. That's what it says. It's supposed to fit in here snug. I wonder if it would be bad to combine the two types of soil. thing down under here <sighs> to catch all my mess all right I'm gonna do the actual getting him wet in a little while after I put everyone else out I am looking at the nepenthes in here the on this this side right here and oh my gosh it's so cute it's so cute I think I'm gonna do that one first just because it's so flipping cute It is tiny. I was under the impression that I had stopped my pitcher plant from growing, but I think mine was approximately this tiny when I got it, which just shows you I should have documented more because I keep feeling like I'm a horrible Nepenthes owner, but I really don't think I'm actually that bad. I don't really know why that's happening like that. Weird. kind of hard to not accidentally bury the little tendrils that stick out you know I don't know I really hope you can see this well because I do not have a second camera angle oh, so flippin cute Oh my gosh, it's sticking out of everything though. So flippin' tiny. 
I'll do obviously like close ups later, but wow, so tiny. You buy the babies for like these big prices, but it is fun to watch them grow. Okay, so here's another type of sundew. This one is a less tendrils. They're like more short and wide tendrils rather than those like long wispy tendrils like this other one's got. Like this one, for example. And I'm pretty sure I gotta do the same thing for all of them. So, sphagnum moss it is for everyone except for the Venus flytrap. Oh. And Nepenthes Veitchi platicilla. That's the one I think I just did, and it is red. It's Ex Maxima Tentenna. Nepenthes Vivid Machine is what it's called. I don't know why I read like the most difficult side of that instruction thing, or of that label thing first. Anyway, I was like, this is a weird one, but I went. The B52, okay. All right, now we've got this adorable little sundew, so cooped, so cooped. Put some at the bottom. All right, see how it just like wraps? Some of them are losing the liquid though. I gotta flip it from the bottom. I don't know why regular plants are not good enough for me, but um, these ones actually will kill bugs for you. And that's why I wanted to buy um, <laughs> The, the, what is it called again? Oh my gosh. See, I'm so new to this. The Drosera, AKA the Sundews. Um, I saw on TikTok, someone had said that they will kill your mosquitoes. These guys have been catching everything that comes in here. Look at this thing. So satisfying. <laughs> and, and like showed how they eat. And I was like, I didn't know that. Like my carnivorous plant place sells them and I had no clue that they had all of those cool uses. I mean, they are kind of just plants, but I didn't know that they could get really big and mosquitoes will land on them and they're great for that. Like, oh, that sounds awesome. Um, mosquitoes are the bane of my existence. Anyway, so this is what this one looks like after I've potted. And I've got uno mas left. This is gonna be a long video. I'm gonna have to look at how long my footage is and see if I'm gonna split it into two. Meh, I don't know, I'm, I'm mostly done. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. We'll see, we'll see if I split it into two. I really need to put these labels back until I memorize what they're called, oh my gosh. I learned the hard way that the, uh, there's too many different types of plants, oh my gosh. I learned the hard way that the Venus fly traps have to be kept outdoors, or if they're not outdoors, it has to be, they have to be in an environment that, that basically simulates outdoors because they um, need minimum six hours of bright, bright sun a day so like it beaming down on them um to be happy and healthy <sighs> and even though my windowsill has a lot of light coming in like you can see how much light is coming in just from this window here um and the same the window that's right there that i keep everything in is is similar wasn't enough light and i don't think it was hot enough either so it was kind of an issue. These sundews are actually supposed to be pretty easy to keep. Um, I should be able to keep them indoors. We'll see. I'll give you an update on that later. I'm gonna try to keep them indoors in this really bright windowsill because they do not need as much light as the, um, the Venus flytraps do, but they do need a lot of light. Um, this kind that I bought, this one looks way happier than this one. <laughs> um, but, but these two that I bought just now, um, these, um, turn red, like a really vibrant, pretty red 
I'll show you an example of a fully grown really red one from like somewhere. These ones are dedicated to my husband. Um, I actually bought red versions of everything this time. I don't know why, um, but they do need a lot of light to actually be red. Um, for As for the Venus flytrap, you can see that the mouths are red on this one. Not very many of them are open. I'll show you up close like later, obviously, but um, <laughs> the mouths are super, super red. And that's why I bought this one, because this one's like red. That's its gig. This Drosera is red. This one just is red right now. So I'm interested to see if that'll stay that way. And then this one's also a very red Nepenthes. So it's not that I like love red or anything. It's actually one of my least favorite colors, but in nature, anytime you can get something cool, that's not just like a regular green, it's kind of sick, like kind of cool. Anyway, so I have now, I don't want to pick them up. I don't want to ruin them. I have now finished potting all my plants. And then let me show you kind of what I do to set them up. I knew I was gonna do that. I'm a dummy and it's one of my favorites. I bet somebody watching this called that that was gonna do that. I bet somebody did. We are back, back to show you um, how do I take care of these. So as, as a refresh, even though it's been three seconds, this is the one I just dropped on the ground. I'm holding it really tight now. Um, this is the very cute little baby one, approximately the same size as when I first got my um, my first Nepenthes. And this is my Nepenthes now. Um, the pictures, I have not, <sighs> I'm really bad at making the pictures grow and stay. Um, I went on vacation for about nine days and uh, my brother-in-law, he doesn't know how to take care of these, but I didn't have another choice. So I was like, hey, can you water, can you mist this and water it? And he missed the part where I said water and he just misted it. So it did stay semi-hydrated, but now this picture right here is dying because it didn't get enough hydration. So I don't blame him because he obviously doesn't know what he's doing. It was kind of a long shot to go on vacation anyway, but you are supposed to. So anyway, what do you do basically when one of these dies off, you just cut off the dead part. Wow. Much better than I'm doing right now. Please don't do what I just did. Um, there's still some liquid in the bottom. I hope I didn't just make things worse. But anyway, so that thing was dying. Now I only have, this one was not even a full picture. Or this one was barely starting to grow when I left on vacation. So at least that happened. So I guess it took a little while for it to dry out. So what I do is I keep a little tray and I let the water drip into that tray. And then I keep this above the water. These, you're supposed to water pretty heavily and then mist every day just so the humidity can stay. Like they need really, really high humidity, the higher, the happier as far as I understand but they don't like to be constantly wet from what I have learned so far. So um, you're supposed to, or at least one trick I learned from somebody on YouTube, I don't remember who, um, was to keep a little tray around them. And when you water them, when you water them, you just water them until they're kind of soaked around and then you let it drip, drip, drip down into the pan. And that way there's a little bit more condensation going into the air just where they are. Um, a step up that I wanna try eventually is to get like a little container and just surround it in that with that container, like a clear one so we can still get light and everything like that. That way it's even more um, humid just in that little area. Haven't done that yet, but I kind of want to before too, too long. But I finally learned <laughs> how to give it enough water. So the leaves are way happier with me. The leaves had been dying all the time 
on this plant and now you can see I have quite a few leaves and every single one of them pictured at first and then I accidentally killed the picture somehow. So I am still working on it. I don't know what I'm doing, but hey, look how big that thing is. Look how big he is compared to this little guy. So I don't remember exactly if this was the exact same size as this when I first got it last year. These might actually be smaller because I think I bought mine in July. And so his crop for the year was probably a little bit bigger by like a month or something. But anyway, so this I'm going to do basically the same thing with. <laughs> I don't I couldn't find anything small to prop it up with. So I think I'm going to prop it up with this. And it'll just be what it is. <laughs> I don't know. So it'll be raised up a little bit. If I can switch that out later, I definitely will. And then I have a cute little watering can, but I just didn't bring it over here, so I'm not gonna worry about it right now. But it needs to be super wet right off the bat. I wish my bathroom had windows because Nepenthes would be so happy in there because my bathroom does not like to air out and I could grow lots of good plants in there with that. My other types of plants that are not Nepenthes slash pitcher plants, um, I am going, I, don't, I always forget this, I always do. Anyway, so for those, um, we are going to put them in this containing, this black containing. And then what I do is since I already watered them previously, oh yeah, I forgot this one. I'm gonna put all three of them in this container. I already got the sphagnum moss wet. So all I have to do this time is fill this thing, like, I don't know, halfway up or something. Um, that way they can grow. They like boggy, swampy environments. So you gotta grow them in a tray of water. Don't water them because that was, again, my mistake in the beginning was just watering these things. And that is not what they want. They want a boggy, sweaty, wet environment. Um, crazy, I know, but anyway. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do with these. The same as these. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is a clip of me outside and I'll just show you my current uh, Venus fly traps and this one and just kind of like show you where I'm putting it. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is a clip of me outside and I'll just show you my current uh, Venus fly traps and this one and just kind of like show you where I'm putting it. I caught my loving husband in time to have him video this outside so I don't have to do lots of extra work. So uh, my hair is kind of crazy, but just bear with it. So I found this really cute lizard. When I first came out here a minute ago, he must've been laying on the table cause he was black. He was charcoal black. And now he wrinkled himself out and made himself look like a piece of wood or a piece of twig. And that's adorable because he was big and round before and black with like his design on him but he looked really cool and in just like a minute when i went inside and came back he already made himself look like a piece of wood or twig i think that's really cool actually i hope he doesn't try to jump on me and bite me but anyway all right so normally you wouldn't water um Thank you. this type of plant overhead but since the dirt's not even wet at all i'm gonna do that and now i'm just gonna fill this up It was getting kind of dirty water, so I um, switched out the water, dumped out the old water, got my toes all nasty, um, and now I'm switching out the water. Oh no, you're floating. <laughs> it's floating because of the water. It's too much in there. Yeah, well, no, because of the 
it's not the heavy enough, I guess. It's not heavy enough because of the type of thing that I used. It's not waterlogged enough. Uh oh. Maybe I should have gotten this potting material wet. Oh. Oh my gosh, guys. Uh, if there's water in it, then maybe it'll be heavy enough. No. Because I literally poured it on top. Mm. Guys, that is pathetic. Oh my gosh, I'm a dumbass. I'm so dumb. Let me pour some out. Oh. I bet you the lizards come and get drinks here. Yep, probably. I know the wasps do for sure. Yep. I thought we had yellow jackets, so I looked it up, and it's just paper wasps, but it's just a scary pattern, I guess, to look like yellow jackets. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're evolved to look like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but they're still paper wasps. They're just not fun anyway. Um, I hate wasps. <laughs> they're just, they're not a big deal, but they're just annoying. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, this is what my outside plants look like. This, this, and this all came from one plant. There used to be two in here, but one didn't make it. Um, I don't think I was supposed to split them up, but I did. And I regret it a little bit. Well, I'm pretty sure when I was out there, the wind parted my hair in a new direction. So that's all I have for you this video. I hope to make another plant tour eventually, maybe. I don't know if people like it. Um, it's kind of fun to document where my plants are at to see how they have grown. Um, and then maybe next video, I will feed them some of the plant food that I purchased um, in front of you guys. That might be fun. Um, anyway, I'll show you my carnivorous and my non-carnivorous plants next time. Assuming you guys even like this video. I don't I don't know. Let me know if you like this video um, If I should make more definitely hit the like button on this video and um, Yeah, share it with people who might want to learn about carnivorous planties I don't know why it sounds weird when I say it like that planties anyway uh, <laughs> Off topic so off topic. I was rambling at the end of the videos Anyway, um, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, let me know in the comments, this is the question of the day, I think, which one of these plants is your absolute favorite? I will show pictures right now of the full-grown plants so you can kind of see what they will look like eventually. Um, and let me know which one you think is your favorite down in the comments for now, though. Bye!